Hello, welcome to Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And of course, this is the last happy day before The Last of Us Part 2 is released and we all have to deal with the devastation of that. So hopefully today will be uh, a very good puzzle um, to send us on our way. This is from Under Beyond, uh, the phenom uh, from Hong Kong, whose first two puzzles I have absolutely loved on the channel. And he published this one a couple of days ago on Logic Masters Germany. I've been keeping an eye on it and the comments from a number of the, the world's best setters and solvers uh, are stellar. It's only been solved 11 times, so it doesn't have a rating yet, but I'm, I'm trusting their comments as, as, being, um, as being accurate. So hopefully this will be a phenomenal puzzle again. Um, what else do I want to tell you? Uh, well, Mark and I did release um, uh, a little bit of extra bio information as a community post on, on our YouTube channel. You can get that under the communities tab. Um, and yeah, that's been a, a seems to have been well received. We just give you a bit more of our backstory, and uh, it's incredible. Actually, the internet is incredible because in response to that, you guys have gone hunting and you found clips of a very young-looking Mark Goodliffe competing in the UK TV show Countdown. Um, so yeah, amazing work, amazing work, and I enjoyed watching that again. Um, and I'm sure Mark won't enjoy watching it again. It still irritates him to this day. But anyway, it's 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 just amazing what you can find hidden in the depths of the web. Um, now, let me tell you about the rules of this puzzle. We have got um, normal Sudoku rules apply. Uh, each cage forms a line of, with a one cell width. So you can see here, if we study the cages, there's no two by two area within any cage here. You can view them all as lines. Um, and digits cannot repeat within a cage. So that's totally standard rules. Each cage is either a killer cage or a lunchbox. So killer cages, they're completely normal, i.e. look at this 15, for example. If this was a killer cage, then the four cells in the cage would have to sum up to 15, as usual, without repeating a digit. If, on the other hand, a cage is a lunchbox cage, then the number in the top left shows the sum of the numbers sandwiched between the smallest and largest number in the line. So, I don't know, where can we find an example here? Uh, let's, well, this three clue, that obviously it's not possible for six cells to add up to three. So this would have to be one of these lunchbox clues. And let's say the three was just on its own somewhere in the middle of the line, let's say it was there, then the smallest and largest digit along this line would have to be in those two cells. That's how this works. Now, of course, what else could we have? Let's imagine this 11 uh, clue here. Let's imagine this was a sandwich clue. Uh, then those two cells would have to form the sandwich because you can't make, uh, you just can't put 11 in one cell. So they could be, let's say they were three and eight then we would know that these two cells would have to be less, one of them would have to be less than three, one of them would have to be greater than eight, so one of them would have to be a nine. Um, so this is this is the rule that Under Beyond introduced in his last two puzzles we've covered on the channel, um, but this time he's blended it as well with Killer Sudoku. Now it's called Lunchbox Sudoku, and Professor Esau uh, apparently came up with the name, Under Beyond tells us, uh, in the preamble to this puzzle. So. Uh, thank you, Professor Esau, Esau, I hope I'm saying that correctly. Um, and with that, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to get cracking in a second. If you want to play the puzzle, you just click on the link under the video as usual, and that will take you to a web page that looks just like this one, where you can play. Um, and with that, I'm going to get cracking, so let's go. Um, uh, now, may maybe this is the place to start, this three clue. Because the three... The three clue can't be made up of a one two cell a one two in the sandwich because then we would need a number lower than one to bound the sandwich and there is no lump number lower than one that we could actually put into this sudoku so we know that in this line here there is a three on its own inside the highest and lowest digits in the cage so the three can't go in at one of the extremities of this cage. It's got to be in one of those four cells. And that, I'm delighted to tell you, is 
completely useless. Um, so that's not where to start. We've got two zero clues. Look, we know, you know, with the zero clues, at least we know that they are lunchbox clues. We just don't know much about them. We know that the smallest and largest digits in the cages must be adjacent to each other. In fact, there's not a great deal to go on here at all, is there? Uh, we've got Ah, yeah. Ah, I have something interesting for you. Look, this six and this six. So let's, we can ask some questions about these cages. Is it possible that these are both killer Sudoku cages? Well, clearly not, because if we try and put one, two, three into both of these, these four cells now in row five have to contain just three different digits. That's not possible. So these are not both killer Sudoku cages. What about lunchbox cages? Can they both be lunchbox cages? Well, no, they can't because if they are lunchbox cages, there's only one central cell in these boxes. It's that one. They would both have to equal six, which they can't do because they're in the same row again. So what we can tell about this, I'm not sure how useful it is yet, well, we can tell one of them is a killer Sudoku cage, one of them is a lunchbox cage. Therefore, there must be a six in one of those two positions. Now, both of these boxes do have, they have, there's a seven in both of these boxes. So whichever one of these six cages contains one, two, and three, the seven in that one can't be one, two, and four, because that would be far too many ones and twos in the same box. It's very difficult to notate this across two different boxes, actually. But so the, whichever one of these is one, two, and three, let's just play around with it. Whichever one of these is one, two, and three, this one now has to be a lunchbox clue, which means its central digit would have to be a seven. This one would have to have a six here. Ah, now this one couldn't then also be a lunchbox clue because that would put, that would put a seven in that cell again. So in fact, the sevens have opposite parity as well. So the sevens have opposite parity. That puts a seven into one of those squares. So there is a seven in one of the blue squares and a six in one of the purple squares. So is that meant to impact on this 10 cage? Well, it would do if I could, if the 10 cage, yeah, that it would be beautiful if the 10 cage was a sandwich clue. Oh, and it must be a sandwich clue. Yes, this is lovely. Look, if this 10 clue is a killer Sudoku clue, it's got to contain one, two, three, and four. But one of these six cages is a one, two, three triple. Let's say it's this one, just for the sake of argument. Now look, in this row, I've got five different cells that can only be selected from four different numbers. That's not possible. So what that tells us, oh, frog in my throat, excuse me. What that tells us is this cage is not a killer Sudoku cage. It is a sum cage. Now that means you can't just put 10 into a cell. So those two cells have to add up to 10 without using seven and without using six. Well, could we put one nine in there? No, because we then have to put a digit lower than a one in one of those two positions and a digit higher than a nine in the other one. Not possible. So these two squares have to be two and eight and there has to be a one nine bounding them because we have to have a number lower than a two and higher than an eight to make the sandwich. That is gorgeous. Um, now, surely that, so now we get another restriction look based off the twos, because now whichever one of these boxes, the six boxes is a one, two, three triple, there's going to be a two forced into one of those extremities. 
I don't really want another colour, do I? Ah, let's put one in. So red means there's a, a two in one of those cells. Oh, no, hang on. We can, we can do this fairly simply now. If there's a two in one of these cells, whichever one of these sixes is the one, two, three triple has a one, three. So one of these dominoes here is a one, three pair. So this square can't contain a one. That's got to be a nine. That's got to be a one. Um, so one of these is a one, three triple, one, three pair. The two is always in one of those squares. So, okay, so in one of these seven cages is a one, two, four triple. And we know that there is a one, three pair in one of the, I'm so sorry, I can't notate this very well, but I know there's a one, three pair in one of those dominoes. So the one, two, four triple in the seven, whichever seven it is, the one must go at the top of the cage. There must be a one in one of those two positions. Yes, let's have more colors. There we go. There's a one in one of the grays, a red in one of the twos, a six in one of the purples, and a seven in one of the blues. Oh, okay. So now we can say more about twos though, because whichever, whichever of these sevens is a one, two, four triple, the two can't go at the top now because we know the one goes at the top. So the two must go at the bottom. So there is a two in one of those squares as well. And I don't, oh, this is getting very confusing. But, oh, that, that means we've got a four, seven pair in those two squares, because I know that the four now in the one, two, four, whichever one of these sevens is one, two, four as a triple, the four must be the central cell. And whichever one of them is the lunchbox clue, the seven must be the central cell. So there is a four, seven, pair now in row five and there's a two in one of those squares oh this is it this is it look there's a two in one of these two red squares so how can this square ever be a two it can't be it cannot be so if this can't be a two this can't be the one two three triple it's impossible that's, that logic feels, com that must be correct, because I know that the seven, the one, the top of the seven has to be a one, therefore the bottom of the seven has to be a two in one of these instances. This cannot be a two. So this, I can think I can get rid of some of the colors now. This has to be the one, two, three, triple. The two must go at the top, therefore. Two must go at the top. Um... Let's get rid of the colors. It's gonna get really confusing otherwise. And I think we've done what we needed to do. Because now, if this is the one, two, three, triple, this can't be a one, two, four. This is the one, two, four. The one must go at the top. The two must go at the bottom. The four must go in the middle. The seven must go on this side. This has to be a slunch box clue. So the six goes in the middle of it. That's a five by Sudoku. This has to be a digit higher than a six. This, this must have an eight or a nine on one side of it. What a start that is. I mean, it's almost designed to break my pencil marking notation. Under beyond, were you being, were you being naughty there? Uh, now, what do we do with this though? Oh, so now I'm just noticing I can't put one or two here. Oh, in fact, the three, the three in this cage can't go at the end of the cage. It's got to go in the middle. So in this box, where does the three go? The three must be in one of those two cells. Oh, 
Ah, uh, no. Bother. That could be a one or a two. I was thinking maybe we could rule a three out from this square, but I think I think that can be a one or a two, and that could be that could be seven, eight, or nine. Therefore, and that would be okay. Okay, so where do we need to look now? Sixteen. Oh, this is where we need to look now. This is beautiful. This is a beautiful idea. So, can this yellow cage here, the sixteen cage, be a lunchbox clue. Now, if it's got a two cell sandwich, how do we make 16 in two cells? The only way would be with seven and nine. That doesn't work because obviously nine, we can't now put a digit higher than a nine in the box. So this is not a two cell sandwich. So if this is a lunchbox clue, it's a three cell sandwich. Those three squares must be involved in it. But now look, look at this eight, nine here. We can't put eight or nine into either of the crusts of this sandwich. So the only way this works is if we can make 16 with three cells without using a seven. We need to put a seven into one of those to make it work. Well, six, five and four add up to 15, not 16. This is just deliberate. This is absolutely beautiful construction. I tell you, any constructor in the world would like the start of this puzzle they would be proud of it. And I know we have a lot of the world's best constructors who watch these videos, so do comment, please. I mean, this is stunning, absolutely stunning. So this cannot be a lunchbox clue because to put make three cells add up to 16, I need to put a seven in one of the, those yellow squares and that will force an eight or a nine into one of those two, which you can't have. So this, this is a five cell clue adding up to 16, that is forced, therefore, to be 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6. We can't put 1s and 2s in the box. That can't be a 1. There's a 1 and a 2 in those squares. Oh, now that's good. That square now can't be a 1 or a 2. So in the 3 box now, this can't be the 3, because I can't put a 1 or a 2 on either side of it. This is not 3. The 3 goes down there. These have got to be seven, eight, and nine in some order. Ah, but where where does three go now in this box? It can't go in any of those four squares. It can't go at the end of the box, so it's got to go here. And it's, oh, it's got to be bounded by a one and a two. That can't go there, so this must be a one or a two. We can't, we can't put a nine in one of those two squares because it will, a nine in one of these two squares will be the biggest digit in this box and therefore three could not be sandwiched. It would, it's gonna be either those two squares or that square that should be the clue number if we try and put a nine in either of those squares. So this is a seven, eight, this is a nine. There's a nine in one of those two positions on the right hand side. Oh, now this, this needs a nine. It's got to have a nine because there's an eight in the box. So if it's got to have a nine, the nine must bound the three and it must go there because this cannot be a nine. It's just beautiful setting. It is just beautiful setting. Look at this now. In this column, I've got one, two, three, and four. So now we can look at this 15 cage. Can this 15 cage be a killer Sudoku clue? Well, those three squares, the minimum I could make those add up to would be five, six, and seven because one, two, three, and four aren't available. Five, six, and seven add up to 18. This cannot be a killer Sudoku clue. So it's got to be a sandwich clue. And that means those two squares add up to 15 without using nine. They are seven and eight. Now there's a nine in this box. There's a nine up here. There must be a nine to bound the eight. That's got to go there. 
Oh my giddy aunt, it is just beautiful. Five, six now to complete this column. The eight clue now, this can't be a lunchbox clue because then the middle cell of it would have to be equal to eight and it can't be. So this is either one, two, five or one, three, four. Well, that means it's definitely got a one in it. Don't think. Well, we might be able to tell which one it is, but I'm not seeing how to do that. No. Uh, where now? Not sure. Thirteen. Zero. Uh, sorry about this. One second. Let me try and spot something. Um. Ah, I'm just wondering, can this eight clue, if this eight clue is a killer Sudoku clue, there's a one and a two in one of those three squares there. So an eight clue, if it's a killer Sudoku clue, has to contain a one, that would have to be a one. And this couldn't be two five, therefore, it would have to be three four. And that doesn't work because of the geometry, look. If there's a 3-4 domino here, how do we put a 3 and a 4 into this 16 cage? The 16 cage has to have a 3 and a 4 in it. But this domino sees four of the cells in the 16 cage. There's only one cell that is not seen by this domino. And we can't put 3 and 4 in the same cell because we are not allowed to have Schrodinger numbers in a Sudoku. At least not in this Sudoku. So this is not 134. Therefore, therefore, this has to be an 8. This is a lunchbox clue. The central cell of it has to be an 8. Therefore, the box has to have a 9 in it to bound the 8. And the 9 can't go here. The 8 gives us an 8 there, look. It gives us a 2. That can't be a 2. Actually, that can't be a 1 or a 2. So, so the, uh, there's a 1, 2 pair there. In the, in the 16 cage. Eights must live down there. Nines must, ah, nines must be living in one of those two cells because of the nine here. Um, Honestly, this guy, this guy, I think I think people like Fistemafel would be proud of this puzzle. I can't give you higher praise than this. Look, look at this seven. Look at the way the geometry works now in this top box. It's, it's sensational. Again, we've got eight locked into one of these two positions. So eight cannot go in those squares. That's a five or a six. This eight here rules out those two. So the eight is forced into one of these two cells which resolves the 8 and the 7 below it. And it goes again, 7s now. Where does 7 go in the top box? It can't go here, it can't go here. This 7 is part of the box. The 7 is forced into the top row. Oh, it's, and again, the 11, the 11 cage now. How do we do this 11 cage? Can it be a sandwich clue? If it's a sandwich clue, you might say, well, that's fine. We could put five and six in there when we could. But now we need to put a digit that's higher than six in one of the yellow squares. And we can't. We can't do it. This is not five and six. This, this has to be... This has to be a killer Sudoku clue. It has to be one, two, three, and five. That can't be one and two, so... That must be one and two over on this side. There's a two beneath it. That gives us a two and a one. The one and the three get forced. Ones must live in one of those cells. Twos must live in one of these cells. Nines must live in one of those positions. Ah, 
Asmus 3s, look. So there's a 3 in one of those two cells. Oh, look, 1, 2 here, 1, 2 here. So in this box, where does 1 and 2 go? That's got to be a 1 or a 2. Oops. So this must be an 8 because by Sudoku then. Oh, and if we look along row 1, we haven't placed 4 and 6 yet. Well, there's a 6 there. So 6 must be here. That must be 4. 4 lives in one of these two cells. Oh, and we can complete box 1 because there's a 5 here. That must be the 5. That must be a 6. That must be a 6. That's not a 6, therefore. 6 is in one of those two cells. So 6 is in one of these two cells. 3, 5 pair here fixes that that is a 4, in fact. So we get a 3, 6 pair. phone's buzzing at me but I am not going to be distracted from this puzzle um, that square's got to be a four or a five look these two squares have got to be six and seven so these squares have got to be four five and eight Those squares have got to have a 7 in them. So this is 3, 7, and 9. That can't be a 7. That can't be a 3. Those two have got to be 4, 5, and 7 in some order. Can I get this 8 cage resolved now? Still no. Ah, ah, now let's look at column four. Now we've got three or six into this square. We haven't yet done anything with fives and sevens in this column. So five and seven must be in two of these three squares. But this is part of this zero cage. So we can't repeat five and seven in the cage. So that square can't be a five or a seven. That's a four. That gives us a five. That gives us a seven. That fixes the seven and the six. The six fixes the six and, oopsie, the six and the three. That fixes the three and the five. One, two is not fixed. There's got to be a three, I think, in one of those squares. So this is a three, five, seven, triple. So it'd be rather, so this box, if I could get the nine into that square, then we would know the composition of the box. And because there's a zero total, that would be the three. Five in one of those squares. The two left to place in this box, but I don't know anything about where it goes. Is it the 13 cage then? Yes, it is the 13 cage because this can't be a lunchbox clue. Look at that. If this is a if this is a sandwich clue, the, the central two cells of it would have to sum up to 13. Well, we can't have 4, 9. We couldn't have 6, 7. And we can't have 5, 8 because the 5 is on this side of the box. So this... Oh, this is huge because this, this now... This now has to be a killer Sudoku cage... And you can't include an 8 or a 9 in it, therefore, um, because you run out of room. The minimum you can make three cells add up to would be 6 by using 1, 2, and 3. So the maximum digit you could have in a 4-cell 13 cage is a 7. You definitely can't have an 8, which means that must be an 8. That fixes the 8 and the 7 over there. And you can't have a 9 in it, so the 9 must live here. Now that, as I said before, that means the... The lowest digit in this cage must be next to the 9. The lowest digit is not the 4, it's the 3. So the 3 goes here. Does that fix this? No, it doesn't quite. I need to force something into this box. Oh, that's a 5 here though, 7. And that, that does force the box now. So this square now... 
The five is shifted into the eight cage. We know it's a killer Sudoku cage, so it's got to be now be one, two, and five. There can't be a four, three in the box. So the four has to go there. The three has to go here. And these squares have got to be one, two, and five. That one can't be five. One, two pair here, one, two, five. Okay, so so this column needs one. This needs one, two, and six. And this column needs one, two, and four. Ah, okay, we can do some logic on this 13 cage now then. Because look, however we arrange these digits, they the only digit that we could put in this one would be 1, 2, 4, or 6. Because 1, 2, 4, and 6 add up to 13. So however I permute these three squares, whatever three of the four digits I take, the fourth digit will always be the other one. So this is a one, two, four, six option. That can't be a two look. And it, oh, and it can't be a six either. Oh, and that, that's good because now in this column, where does the four go? It's in one of those two squares. So that can't be a four. That is only left with the option of being a one. That gives me a two here, a two here, a one here. The one fixes the one and the five. That fixes a four there. So this has to be a two, this has to be a six, this has to be a one. Oh, we've got twos now in those two cells. That can't be a two anymore. The two must live here. These two squares, we're going to be able to use the zero clue to disambiguate this. We need four and six into this domino and the zero clue tells us that the highest and lowest digits have to appear together so the six must be that way round. That means that's a six now. Uh, six is lower than seven so I have to put a digit higher than seven into this square and it can't be eight that's got to be nine. That's a four we need to complete this row. That must be a four by Sudoku. 9 fixes this square as a 3. The 2 fixes the 2 and the 1 on this side of the grid. I think we're closing in on a solution here. You can see the 8. Where do we put an 8 in this column? It can only go in that square. 8, 5. That means that's a 5. That's an 8. That's an 8. That should be a 7, I think. That fixes the 7 and the 9. The 9 here. I still need to put a 3 somewhere. Three and six. Oh, don't want. I don't like that six there. I want to put a five. <sighs> Nearly an error. I think it looks okay. Yes. What a beautiful puzzle that was. I absolutely loved that. I, you know, it's just such. Um, what's the right word? The solve solving process is so fun and so clever. It's just an absolute buzz. Uh, under Beyond, I mean, 16 years old. Man, you've got a puzzle future ahead of you. Goodness me. Um, let me know in the comments what you thought of the puzzle. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.